first Premier League winning team. Um, Schmeichel, Paul Parker, Steve Bruce, Gary Pallister, Dennis Irwin, Paul Ince, Brian McClare, myself, Eric Cantona, Mark Hughes, and more of a bit like that, and Andre Kinchelskis. A lot of pace in the wide areas, um, energy in the middle of the park, the experience and partnership of Steve Bruce and Gary Pallister, and the physical aspect of Mark Hughes, who could score amazing goals, and obviously the imagination, and also the physical aspect of, of Eric Cantona. Very often teams would play um, 4-4-2 at that time. Um, myself, I'd be more or less hugging the touchline. Um, I think my main strengths were being able to, if the defender was there, especially with Dennis Irwin. Once Dennis got on, onto his right foot, I was looking for the ball. I would come towards the ball. As soon as it would be on his right foot, I would be looking to attack that space, knowing that he had that ball that would curve over the defender into my path. So, especially early on, um, I would say to Dennis, Dennis, let's see if this fullback wants to keep running back with me. And then usually if that would come off, what would happen? The defender would have that little bit, of, he would drop off a little bit more. And I was then able to get that ball to feet. I think um, if I was able to get the ball here, um, obviously I touched on it. Um, we had the, we had the Mark Hughes who would occupy or try and occupy the centre halves. And we had Eric in these sort of areas. He could also go up front, but he was doing most of the damage in these positions here, just in that pocket behind the midfield, in front of the mid, um, in front of the defence. And for me, it was great because I could either play that ball into Sparky's feet, or I also had Eric in these little pockets. And very often, wherever it was on the pitch, if he was receiving the ball here and I was here, as soon as Eric would receive the ball, I was off running because I knew he could produce that pass, whether it be in behind or whether it be just in there in my path. So I'd be running at, at the defenders um, from deeper areas. But it was great for me because you had two targets. You had, sometimes Eric would go up front and obviously with his height and his physique, you could drop it into him or into Mark Hughes' feet. And again, someone who could hold the ball up. So you could really wrap the balls into these players. And also Eric had the ability, if there was that space, to run in and I would just play the ball down the sides and I would then be that, that centre forward. But very often Eric would be occupying these sort of spaces, dropping in, giving the problem, who picks him up. And also when he did do that, especially Brian McClare, he would then make them third man runs um, into the box, into them goal scoring positions. Champions League winning team in 99. Schmeichel, Gary Neville, Yap Stam, Ronnie Johnson, Dennis Irwin, Paul Scholes, Roy Keane, David Beckham, myself, Dwight York or Teddy Sheringham, Andy Cole or Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, we had the penetration of Andy Cole, who very often tried to stretch the defence, giving um, the space for either Dwight York or Teddy Sheringham, dropping in, in that number 10 position. He had the control in midfield of Paul Scholes, Roy Keane. Scholes had been the one who would join in um, in the box. Um, the balance of David Beckham, who obviously from anywhere on the pitch, he could, he could uh, deliver a ball, whether it be whipped into Andy Cole or into that little pockets for Dwight York, or even if Beck's got the ball here, I was off and running because I knew that he could play that 60 yard pass. Um, and whether Coley, because of his runs, occupy the fullback and I would stay out wide, or whether he would be there then I would make them runs in between 
the fullback and the centre half, knowing that Bex could deliver either ball. So at this point, probably for me, I was just starting to mix up my game where I would perhaps be playing more in these little pockets. So giving him the problem, does he go tight? Which I know fullbacks don't like to do. They want to be in their area. They don't really want to be going in there because you have obviously the overlapping. Yeah, you have the, the fullback who will, uh, the, the winger who will stay with the fullback, but they don't really want to leave their area. So depending on who I was playing against, I would mix that up. So if I knew it was someone who was, who was quick, he could go in there knowing that he was able to get back. But also if there was someone slow in there, knowing that I would be coming towards the ball and then spinning in behind, knowing that space was in behind. Or stay out wide, give them the problem. Um, what do they do? I said Coley likes to play them, uh, run, make them little runs. Do they cover them? And then obviously leaving the space for me, which Scolzi would find me, um, similar to Cantona. Yorkie would find me in them positions. And then again, I have that strength, obviously, running at um, defenders 1v1. So here, gradually, still quick enough to run in behind, but not that blistering pace that I had when I was younger, um, where I would often yeah, have the ball, knock the ball past the defender, and be able to get it the other side. But still sort of playing with the, the fullback. What does he want to do? What does he do when I stay out wide? What does he do when I move into them little pockets? And if he doesn't come, I'm able to turn and play them little balls in for Coley or for Yorkie, sometimes peeling into the back post or even into that number 10 position. I often say um, Lee Dixon was one of the most difficult opponents uh, because he was, he was quickish, but also he was intelligent. So I think he always got his um, distances right, which not all fullbacks do, especially quick ones, because they always think they can get out of jail. Very often they would go tight and you only need, it doesn't matter how quick you are, if you come towards the ball and then spin, you're always gonna get on the ball or vice versa. Look to running behind, yes, give me the ball to feet and you're able to turn. You always get that couple of yards if you're clever enough. With, with Lee Dixon, he always got that distance right that you couldn't spin in behind. But also, if you did get the ball to feet, he was up to you. He was able to stop you from turning or put enough pressure on the ball to hurry you in your decision-making. And Highbury was a tight pitch as well. So I enjoyed playing against him more at Old Trafford rather than Highbury. It wasn't really a winger's dream, Highbury, where it was a tight pitch. Obviously, they had Seaman, Dixon, Bold, Adams, Winterburn, that experience, and also that Vieira, Petit um, partnership in midfield, where they were really strong in the defensive aspect. So many battles with him over the years. Um, intelligent, quick, brave, and also, something I've not touched on, making you run back as well. So very often the... The toughest opponents that I've played against, Cafu, Zanetti, they were the players who would make you defend as well and make you run back. I've since done TV with Lee Dixon and um, the thing that he always says about me, he says, you're a nightmare to play against because I could never read you. You never reacted. If I kicked you, your face stayed the, cha stayed the same. If you went past me a couple of times, face was still the same. So I never really wanted to get involved with a fullback. It was only a couple of times early on in my career where a fullback would try and intimidate me, go past me again and you'd be in trouble, that sort of thing. I didn't really come across it that much, but yeah, I tried to show no emotion. I tried to, if they ever kicked me, it never hurt. And if they were always trying to run me, go on then, keep running me. I'm going to do this for 90 minutes. So I tried to not only intimidate them by, yeah, running in behind constantly, giving them that problem, 
that then they would sit off me and then I could get the ball to feet because I was I was able to penetrate with and without the ball. So if I did have the ball, I could run at players. If I didn't have the ball, I was always prepared to, to run in behind, especially in the first 10 years of my career. I always wanted to stamp my authority on the fullback. And it was always cat and mouse, always cat and mouse with this player. Yeah. And of course, you know more or less the fullback or the type of fullback that you're going to play against before you come up against them. So in training that week, I would do, if a player wanted to, to do that, constantly keep speaking to Dennis, keep speaking to Scalzi, Yorkie, okay, I'm playing against such and such, you know the space is going to be there in behind because he's going to go tight with me. Or vice versa, he always sits off me. He's not quick enough. He wants me to have that ball and he doesn't want to give up that space in this area. So, yeah, it was, it was preparing against who you were going to play against. And also, this guy was important as well. You know, are you playing against an out-and-out -out winger who's not going to protect this player? Or are you playing against a winger who will want protection, who will try and stop as much as you can, you getting the ball, and, um, yeah, double back on you as well, which then... Yeah, that was the case here. Dennis, what does he do? Does he overlap, affect this player, or does he stay there? And um, I'm able to give, give Dennis the ball and obviously space for others then.